Please, please welcome Naga.
And I became aware of that discomfort, and I stepped back. <sighs> Relief, but it didn't last long. They stepped closer, and so I stepped back, and they came closer. I stepped back, and they came closer until I was back up against this pillar by the stairs. And the only way for me to get further away from them was to sit on the pillar, and I did. And they came closer still. They were oblivious. Now, I kept the conversation going as normal because, God forbid, I should make them feel uncomfortable. I don't want people to feel uncomfortable because of me. So you would never have known looking at me. But it was in this moment where I could not go anywhere that the panic started to set in because I knew what came next. And it was in that moment of panic that Josh came out and he saw this. And he put his arm around me and I felt so relieved and ashamed in equal magnitudes. You see, this was not the first time anything like this had happened. It was far from the worst, but it was the first time that he had been there for it. And I hated that. For the rest of the night and days to come, my blood boiled with anger. I decided that I had to do something about this. It had to stop. Was I asking for it to happen? I just didn't understand. I needed to understand. So I went to a counselor. Well, the counselor I got was my classmate. <laughs> so I walked into this room. Beige walls, no windows, brown furniture, this slender woman who was in my mental health class, and a desk between us. And I sat down, and I tried to make words come out, but all that came out was just waterworks and tears. And eventually I did get words out, and I asked her, after pouring forth my deepest, darkest secrets that had never seen the light of day until this moment, I asked her, how do I make this go away? What do I do? How do I make it stop? It has to. I'm afraid to tell Josh, what if he doesn't understand? And this is where I started to collect my little bits of don'ts. Don't have guidelines. Don't go dancing. In addition to that, I got, don't smile. Don't laugh. Don't touch people too much. Don't be too friendly. Don't drink too much, that makes you even more friendly. Don't wear that, they might get the, right, the wrong idea. And yeah, you probably shouldn't tell Josh because you're right, he might not understand. So I took a little basket of don'ts that was really, really heavy, and I tried to go through the world with that. And it worked, but it wasn't me. It felt like having a bodyguard, but not one that was meant to keep others out. It felt more like it was meant to keep me in. But it was all I had. So I went through with that for years. Now it would be a couple more years before Josh and I ended up splitting shortly after I graduated college. And the first thing I did, I called my friend Blake and asked him, when are you going dancing next? I'm coming with you. <laughs> and I did. I drove all the way to Tampa with him. We went dancing. And for the first time in years, came alive as the jazz music that filled that dance hall filled my soul I came alive and it was one of the most memorable lights of my life. I came back to Jacksonville and the first place I went dancing was the Bulls Dead right over on East Island Street and shortly after that I started teaching the lessons there before I knew it swing dancing was my identity <laughs> Um, and I, I built a safe haven there. My swing dancers are my safe haven. I can run wild and free, and so can they. And they know that wherever we are together, we're a family. We even have a flag that we take when we travel to other swing dance scenes so that people know, here is home, here is safety. Now, when I'm not around my swing dancers, I am watchful. It's like stepping in out of this fantasy world of safety in this cocoon. But I have learned that my comfort matters. My comfort is valuable. I am valuable. And 
and I've learned to use my voice. I've turned those don'ts into do's. Don't smile too much. <laughs> I smile unapologetically. And if you're the one that makes me uncomfortable, I have no obligation towards your comfort. You will know. <laughs> so I've redefined what kindness is to me. I'm a work in progress, but I've learned that kindness is not always comfortable. And that's okay. I've learned that kindness without boundaries is not kindness. It's conditioning. And kindness is also kindness to yourself sometimes.